What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today I'm going to make a Chrome material in Cinema 4D. Alright, so this has been a highly requested tutorial and I think for people who are very new to Cinema 4D this might be interesting to look at and I'll try to explain the basics of why Chrome material looks the way it does. Um, so I got in the skull, I downloaded this from I think Turbo Squid for free. I'll put a link in the description to their website. I'm not really sure if I can find this model exactly again, but you can probably find a lot of free to use skulls and personal projects there. So the way that Chrome works is you can see what is reflected in it. And if you're new to 3D, you probably don't know about this. If you are experienced in 3D, you probably already know. Uh, let me just remove my Octane Node Editor because we're going to do this in the basic Cinema 4D. I'm going to go and create a new material here. And I'm going to apply it to the skull. So what we can do here, if we bring up this material thing here, instead of color, we want to go to reflectance because Obviously, uh, Chrome is a reflective material. We can just remove the default specular here, which is the highlight here, as you can see. If I turn this off, you can kind of see what's going on there. We just remove it. I'm gonna add a new reflection and we'll click on GGX. And immediately, you can already see that this Chrome thing is working. Uh, however, if you press the preview button here, you can not see a lot. And you wanna get that like super detailed Chrome, right? So the way that you want to do that is you want to have something that this can reflect in because if we zoom out in our project there's nothing here except for the skull uh, and the easiest way to do this is with a sky object and an hdri map and if we go here and we will add a sky uh, basically a sky material just is something that fills like everything in your uh, scene except for like other stuff uh, that will be in there like 3d objects or something but yeah we need a material for the sky and we want this material to emit light. So I'm just going to make a default material, apply it to the sky here. And what's happening is if I make this material green, for example, you'll start seeing that the chrome reflective thing is also reflecting green because it's reflecting what's around it. So it's reflecting the sky inside the skull. I'm going to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see. I'm going to go right click on the sky object here. So I'm going to go to render tags, compositing. And I'm just going to check off scene by camera. And this will make it so that the uh, sky object will still be here. But pretty much we will only see the objects that are in our scene. So now if you do a render preview, you can actually see that the skull is only there and it's reflecting all the green. But obviously in Chrome in real life, if you look at a car for example or whatever, uh, it's reflecting what's around the car, if you know what I mean. Like if you look into a spoon for example, you will see your own face. That's basically what we're going to do here. So if we click on the material here, we can just check off the color because we want something to emit light. Uh, we can check off the reflectance as well. So we're going to go on luminance and this will make it so that we emit light. And instead of emitting like a color or a gradient or whatever, we're going to emit an image. So I got a couple of uh, HDRI maps here. And basically what HDRI maps are, are like 360 pictures. Uh, you can find a lot of for free on some websites. I'll put them in the description, uh, but you can also get like a couple that are paid, but they're probably better quality and more interesting to look at. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna go with the quarry and I'll just click no. And now you can actually see that there's like some detail happening. And if we just turn on the sky again, you can see that there's like an actual environment around our object here. So when we'll just check it off again, and once we do a preview, you can actually see that that detail is there. Now all that's left for us is to play with what we have. So if we go to the material here of our Chrome object and we go to the reflectance tab, uh, we probably want to increase the roughness of a little bit so that the reflection will like be a little bit more diffused all over it, if you know what I mean. You see it's getting a little bit noisy uh, and a lot of people don't really talk about this in like the short tutorials that I've been following when I just started Cinema 4D. Uh, but you can actually uh, up this a little bit. So if you go to the bottom here, you can not really see it. So I'll just go and do it here. Uh, so here in the reflectance tab, we'll go to layer sampling. And with the layer subdivisions, we'll put that to like eight. And that will bring in more detail to our reflection. And as you can see, it takes a little bit longer to load but those grainy spots will be gone. Um, so something that you can do if you wanna get like a color in there or something, is you can go to the material here and we'll go to the luminance tab and this is where our quarry image was. And we'll just click this drop box down here and we'll click on layer. 
if we go into the layer and perhaps we want to have like a different sort of chrome or maybe a different color or something, uh, we could just go to shader, maybe like a gradient and we'll, in the gradient we'll click up some couple of colors. Maybe we'll do some like the Dreadlabs colors, like a purple and a neon green or something. And we'll go with the 2D vertically. And then we will just put this to color. And as you can see, what's happening here uh, is, we'll just turn on the scene by camera again. Basically, we put a gradient with a color blend mode over our HDRI image, uh, which will basically result in the detail being preserved from the HDRI map. So the different like things that you would see in the reflection, uh, but there will also be like color present. Another thing that we can do, just uh, let me just bring it up again. We'll go to effect, use saturation, lightness. And I'll saturate this even more. I can just delete the gradient. Uh, this will get like the super like desert chrome-ish thing that you've been that like maybe a lot of people have been seeing on Instagram. Uh, and let's bring up the chrome material again. Basically, this will determine like how big that like shine spot is, the specular strength. And if you want to add some more detail, you can go to a bump surfaces, and then you can click on metal. And let's just put the roughness down to like 5% or something. So there will be a little bit more detail in there. And I'll just try to load this and I'll skip ahead until we are finished with the rendering. All right, so as you can see, we have a Chrome object now, which is really detailed. You can kind of see the quarry in there. Um, I'm just going to go and load one more image in the HDRI map so you guys can see the difference. Maybe you can see some detail in there even. And then we'll call it a day for this tutorial. So go to the luminance tab again. Click the layer and here in the bitmap click on the thumbnail image and we'll load in another image uh, you don't only need like um hdri images you can also just use images that you found online from like whatever so let's go with okay so now we have an urban street in there and once we go upwards we can just change the hue here because it's a really weird color at this moment uh, maybe we'll just delete the use saturation lightness. And as you can see now, you can see the buildings in there. In there. Uh, let me just render it so you can see it properly. But yeah, you can see what's actually in the reflection, which gives that chrome detail. Giving you an easy chrome material to work with in Cinema 4D in the standard renderer. So yeah guys, that's it for the video. Uh, next time I will do the, try to do this in Octane. And if you have any more Cinema 4D's tutorial requests, please leave them in the comments down below or you can join us on Discord. So if you want to get the project file for this tutorial or any of my other tutorials, you can become a patron. Uh, thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to make these videos for you guys uh, so they, because they support me in that way. So besides getting access to all of the project files for my tutorials, you'll also get a 15% discount in our asset web store on dreadlabs.net. Uh, you'll also get a cool Discord role and an exclusive channel there. So with that being said, I want to thank you for watching. This was Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out and I'll see you in the next video.